Hey and welcome to another plant care video. Today we're going to be discussing three different plants that look pretty similar and they are the Florida Green, the Florida Beauty and the Florida Ghost. So because these plants are pretty similar, the care guide for them is also pretty similar. So I will be discussing the main care for this plant in the Florida Green segment. So if you do own a Florida Ghost or a Florida Beauty and you just want to know a little bit more on those ones, you can skip further ahead on the video and I'll make sure I put some timestamps to make that nice and easy. But for now, let's get into the video. The first plant that I'm going to chat about today is the Florida Green. And I did purchase this plant a pretty long time ago. So it was back in 2019 and it was a very small plant. I think it may have been a cutting at the time. And I found very quickly with this plant that they are extremely low maintenance and very tolerant to whatever neglect you are going to give it. Uh, so in that case, it's a fantastic plant to start off with if you are new to houseplants and you're a bit worried on how to look after them. This one will deal with a lot of potential mistakes that you may make. The lighting requirement for this plant is pretty high if you want to produce some pretty big leaves that also have that really nice mature shape. However, it definitely can deal with a low lighting environment and currently that is the environment that I am providing for this plant. I've had it for a long time and as you can see it's pretty big so it's taking up a lot of space in my house and the only spot that I can put it doesn't really get much sunlight at all. Uh, it's basically only getting a sort of grow light that I'm supplementing and it's dealing with it okay. It's definitely not dying and showing any signs of unhappiness. The only difference that I can see with this plant is it's starting to produce um, much smaller leaves. So quite far up the pole here, um, you will see that this shape of leaf is more of a sort of juvenile shape uh, because it doesn't have those elongated sort of sections on the leaf. Um, as opposed to a leaf like this, um, which has been here for a long time. Um, I've got about six cuttings growing on this moss pole, so they're all sort of different shapes and sizes um, from where it was growing at the time. That is what makes it a little bit easy with this plant to determine if you are giving enough sunlight or not. If it's continuously giving you those smaller uh, juvenile shaped leaves, then um, it will probably benefit a little bit more from some brighter indirect sunlight if you can do that. When watering this plant, you do want to make sure that you're watering pretty frequently. However, because it's a low maintenance plant, it will tolerate some infrequent watering. So um, I have left it in the past three weeks before I gave it its next water and it dealt with it. There was no sort of yellowing leaves or any leaves falling off or anything like that. It's also one of those plants that won't sort of indicate that it needs a water so you won't see any drooping sort of unhappy looking leaves. It's um, pretty much you'll just either give the soil a feel to see if it's starting to dry out or you will uh, touch your moss pole if it's growing on one just to see if it's starting to dry out and it requires its next water. The soil mixture for this plant is something that can hold a little bit of water in between each watering. However, we also do want to provide some good aeration in there so that way the roots are not prone to getting root rot. And I like to keep things very simple with my plants and they're all kind of in a very similar soil mixture. This one is in a standard aroid mix and I just add a little bit of regular potting soil just to hold a little bit more moisture in between each watering as it's a little bit more dense than a standard aroid mix. And same with this plant and all of my houseplants that I have, I do add nutrients to each watering and I use growth technology at Foliage Focus. While we're on the topic of soil, I would like to mention that this plant is a climbing plant, so it's going to produce some aerial roots that want something to attach to and grow upwards. With all of my Florida varieties, I have them all on a moss pole. They are all in different mixtures. So this one here is a moss pole that I've made with wire and zip ties, and it is filled with straight sphagnum moss. Uh, my Florida Beauty is in a plastic moss pole with straight sphagnum moss and my Florida Ghost uh, is on a moss pole with sphagnum moss and cocoa chips. 
because I like experimenting, they are all on different moss poles. Uh, so I can see which uh, sort of moss pole type and also the substrate that's inside is going to work best for this plant. Out of all three of them, the Florida Beauty is growing the best. And I believe this is because the sphagnum moss holds a lot more water and it is in a enclosed plastic pole. So that means that the moisture and humidity is going to be in there a little bit longer rather than a moss pole like this one that the Florida Green has um, that dries out relatively quickly. I find in between each week it is completely dry and the moss pole for my Florida Beauty, the sphagnum moss is still a tiny bit damp which has allowed those aerial roots to go absolutely nuts inside. There's a lot of roots in that moss pole compared to the other two. The temperature and humidity for this plant I don't think are too important. It's again super low maintenance. Um, I have been growing this plant in a few different locations that would have had uh, very different temperature and humidity. Uh, it's probably in the worst conditions um, where it is currently and it's still growing pretty well and I'm not noticing um, any issues with the leaf unfurling. You definitely don't need this plant in a greenhouse or a IKEA cabinet type environment. Overall, this plant is super low maintenance and it's pretty much going to deal with whatever you throw at it. And I might just chat a little bit about propagation because this plant is so easy to take care of. Of course, its propagation way is going to be really easy as well. So let's get into that. So let's talk about propagation for this plant and the way that I propagate this Florida Green is the exact same as I would for the Beauty and the Ghost. Um, they are all on moss poles, which is super helpful if you are propagating this plant. So if it's not on a moss pole, this probably won't apply to how the propagation will be for this uh, because when it's on a moss pole, it it's producing a lot of aerial roots that grow throughout the moss pole and when we make a cut to propagate it's already pretty much got a full root system within the moss pole. If it's not growing on a moss pole like the sort of area up here it's already outgrown it. It does have a little bit of aerial roots but it's not enough to sustain that cutting so you would have to propagate it in um, whatever sort of propagation method you use. Um, I pretty much use sphagnum moss to propagate everything um, but I reckon you could probably water propagate this pretty easily as well. So what I am doing with this plant which I haven't done with the others yet is I allow it to grow to the very top of the moss pole so this is where the moss pole stops and we've already got this amount of growth um, at the moment it's probably got two nodes on here and what I do to propagate is I go much further down on the stem I make a cut in the appropriate spot where I'll put a photo of what that means and then I will place that cutting at the base of the pot and I will sort of feed in those aerial roots that have grown already lower on the moss pole and I will sort of feed that through so it can start to grow up again. And I will secure it with some sort of plant tie. So I use budding tape and I just keep doing that to turn the moss pole into more of a full plant rather than just having a single stem that grows to the top. And then I sort of propagate, well, chop and start again. So on this moss pole, I have about six cuttings and it's really starting to look quite full and nice. Um, I will show you a close up of the stem now so you can see where the new growth is coming and also how many stems are on there. So this is where I have previously propagated. You can see that there is a stem that I have cut here and this is where the new growth will come from. This is the sort of stem situation that we've got going on in here and I just propagate when it reaches the top place the stem in the bottom and then tie it with some budding tape and because it's already got those aerial roots it just continues to grow all the way to the top of the moss pole. Next up we have the Florida Beauty and the thing that makes this different to the Florida Green is the beautiful variegation that you can see on the leaves on here and the first thing I want to chat about with this plant is the lighting. So if you watched my earlier sort of segment on how to take care of the Florida Green everything applies to that plant and this plant. Um, with all of its varieties I think you can take care of it relatively the same and it will still grow nice. Uh, but I do have this growing in a different environment only because it's uh, a lot smaller and I can put it in a different spot compared to the Florida Green. One thing I've noticed with this plant
plant compared to the Florida Green um, is I'm giving it a lot more lighting and it has really impacted the internode space on the plant. So I'll come a little bit closer so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. It's just the space between this leaf here and this leaf here. So it's just right in here. And with this plant, previously in my old house, it was not getting as much sunlight as it is currently. And if you look further up on the moss pole, you can see that internode space is much smaller. So this is the space here, as opposed to down here where the space is this big. If you are providing much brighter lighting conditions for this plant, you will notice that the internode space is much smaller, which is definitely ideal because it will grow up the moss pole if you have it growing on one, and it will look like much more of a full plant because it, I guess, will have more leaves on that stem because there's a smaller space. Another thing for lighting for this plant is with variegated plants, there's a lot that I've seen online where people say that lighting sort of encourages more variegation. I don't think that's true and I definitely don't think that this is true for this plant. I'm finding that the variegation is completely random. With these lower leaves down here, the variegation is uh, a lot. Um, it's a lot more lighter of a leaf um, in, uh, in terms of it's less green. And where these leaves are more variegated, I was actually providing a lot less sunlight than I am currently. So if providing more sunlight encourages more variegation, it would be the complete opposite. So when you're purchasing this plant, I would have a look at previous leaves to see what the variegation is like, but I wouldn't worry about it too much because it's just up to the genetics of the plant. It's going to produce whatever variegation it wants to. The leaves are also very responsive to the direction of sunlight that it is receiving. So if I turn this plant straight on with how I had planted it when I first got it, you will see that all of the leaves are pretty much pointing out this way and that is because it's the direction of sunlight that I'm giving it. I am also supplementing with a grow light at the moment which comes from more of a top angle but I don't think it's enough to actually change the direction of the leaves. If you didn't watch earlier on in the video where I spoke about the Florida Green and how to take care of it, I had mentioned that this plant is on a moss pole and it's on a different moss pole compared to the Florida Green and the Florida Ghost that I have. And it has a prefabricated plastic moss pole, so it's one that's enclosed at the back and it is filled with just sphagnum moss only. Out of all three plants, this one is definitely growing the best in terms of the leaf size and shape and how well the aerial roots are sort of dispersing throughout this moss pole. So I think, in my opinion, this is probably the way to go. It definitely doesn't like to dry out in between each watering and the sphagnum moss stays that little bit damp in between each weekly watering. And lastly, we have the Florida Ghost. And the reason this plant is called a ghost is because when the leaf Leaf starts to first unfurl it is a very ghostly white color and as that leaf starts to age it does turn a little bit more of a sort of green and white um, sort of like a minty green and I have seen a lot online discussing why some of the leaves are a little bit more white and others are a little bit more of that sort of minty green color I have also seen online people selling it as a Florida ghost mint and I think that this has everything to do with the amount of lighting that it is receiving. In my previous house, it was in a spot that got a amazing amount of light. It was really, really bright in direct sunlight. And these lower leaves down here um, are much more of a white color and they're quite old now, like they're a few months old. So they should really start to be going that sort of minty green color, but it hasn't as of yet. And where it is in currently in this house, it is not getting as much sunlight. So you can already see that the color of the leaf when they're first unfurling is a little bit more of a green color rather than a white. So if you can provide it in a spot that has some really bright sunlight, obviously not direct, it's going to give you some much nicer whiter color leaves. So I think with this plan, I'm going to try and do some plant rearranging and see if I can put it in a spot that has a lot more sunlight because 
I really like the white leaves and of course that's the reason why I purchased this plant because I wanted nice white leaves and it's giving me the sort of minty green colour which don't look bad, I would just prefer it to be a little bit more white so I'm going to do a little plant experiment and see if I can give it a brighter spot and see if the leaves start to change as it grows up the pole. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope it was helpful for you. If you do have any questions, please let me know in the comments and I will see you in the next video.